Welcome, guys. How's everybody doing tonight? Okay, so first of all, I want to um, let everybody know that I appreciate I had to actually sent out the class for tonight. Normally our classes is on Tuesday night, but um, due to the circumstances, we had to move it to tonight and actually it was gonna, also gonna be almost canceled tonight, but uh, Baruch Hashem, Hashem has helped me and Baruch Hashem, we are here tonight to learn this final class of chapter 47 of Likud Tema Haran, Rabbi Nachman of Breslov. And uh, guys, today's last winding down. We're winding down at the end of this chapter. A lot of review. So if, again, if you've been through all the classes that we went through from the beginning, um, you will for sure, um, you will for sure uh, understand this concept. And again, Rabbi Nachman is just going back through the review and reviewing the material. Um, at the end of this specific chapter, I'll have one more story. We'll take it from the book Tzaddik, which kind of brings the whole point home. And if we have a little bit more time, we'll do one Likutei Tefillot, a prayer from Rav Nassan, who basically uh, composed prayers for every single chapter of Likutei Maharan. So not only do we learn the material, but of course we pray for the specific things that Rabbi Nachman speaks about in his Torahs, which is incredible. So Bizrat Hashem, uh, let's see how much time we have, but let's get down to business, everybody. Also want to dedicate tonight's class in memory of Abraham ben Yehuda, Zichrona Lebracha, whose yard site is tonight, which is my mother-in-law's father. May his neshama have an aliyah through all the holy words of Torah that we're going to be learning tonight. And of course, we will be learning in memory of my mother, Deborah Fega, Bat Shmuel, Zichrona Lebracha. And also, we're going to be learning in memory of Menachem Mendel ben Elchanan. If you guys can hear me, I'm seeing here some uh, saying to check my audio. Is the audio not sounding great? Please let me know. Does it sound okay? Let's see here. You guys put in the chat, let me check. Is the audio sounding okay? We get a thumbs up if audio sounds okay. Perfect, sounds good, amazing. Okay, all right. So let me get you guys up here and going. All right, so we left off. We just finished section nine of chapter 47. Tonight, we are starting now section 10. Again, this is a lot of review. So just so we all are on the same page, a lot of the stuff, for those that are new, new concepts, new ideas. But for those that have been through it, you'll, you'll see how we're, we've gone through all this process. Have some fun with this tonight, guys. This is the end. Let's enjoy it. So Rabbi Nachman continues, and he's talking about, again, we're speaking about the concept of, you know, eating properly, sticking to truth, and met, these different ideas. So Rabbi Nachman says, And with this, you can understand the wonders and the words of our sages. Shadar al Pasuk, which they expounded on this verse. Your life will hang in the balance. What was that all about? That refers to someone who hangs up his fillin. We learned earlier in the chapter that not a good idea to take tefillin and hang it on a peg on a wall because that sort of disrespect that you have for tefillin, it says, if you do that, you're going to hang your life in the balance. Okay? So that's what he was referring to here. Next part was, and by the way, that, rec that, that idea of tefillin, that your life will hang in the balance, that's how we came to the conclusion that tefillin equals life, right? Tefillin is life because the same way that if you hang up your tefillin and you do it in that kind of way, your life will be hanging in the balance. That's how we connected that. Then he says, there's another passage that we learned from Masechet Menachot in the Gemara, this refers to someone who buys from a baker. What was that all about? So we learned specifically that somebody who back in the day doesn't grow his own produce. He doesn't go and grow crops, his own fruits, etc. What does he have to do? Now he has to go to the market, right? And what happens when you have to go to buy from a baker and have to go to the market? You're relying that they have that product for you. Whereas if you were growing your own stuff, you know you have it. But now you have to go to the shop go to the market and what happens if they don't have it that's not good that's a sign of quote unquote poverty which also was a connection between that idea because again 
poverty means, which is talking about the concept of wealth, meaning if you are hang up your tefillin, so to speak, that's what's going to happen is what he was saying to you, that not could, poverty can come your way. That's the idea of going to a market and really like relying on them, right? And we said the tefillin also is the concept of emet, of standing up. What helps a person stand up? Money, right? So that's a, that was the connection between those specific things. So Rabbi Nachman, based on that, says, <clears throat> he says that these and those are both the words of the living God, right? There were two different explanations regarding this concept of hanging up your tefillin and what it means. For these and those are both the words of, they are the same being that he hangs up his tefillin. And what happens when he hangs up his tefillin? It causes a blemish in in the actual tefillin itself. And because you create this blemish in tefillin, what are you really connecting with? The attribute of truth. We said that tefillin equals truth. How do we get to tefillin equals truth? Because tefillin is the concept of pe'er, it's beauty. We spoke about how pe'er and tefillin is a beautiful thing on you. And pe'er is the concept of the, the root word of tiferet. And tiferet, which is the concept of in between chesed and gevura, tiferet, which represents also the concept of beauty, is the equivalent of who? Yaakov Avinu. And Yaakov Avinu, as we know, also equals emet. So you can see it's a uh, concept, 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 concept. <clears throat> and what happens in that aspect when you now blemish the aspect of truth? You are now in a state of hidden countenance because the ultimate concept of truth is that Hashem's countenance is upon you. But if you're not sticking to truth and you're sticking to falsehood, what happens? Hidden countenance. Hashem is not looking at you. And then what happens? Now your bounty is diminished Oh, yeah, yeah, your bounty, your prosperity, your wealth is gone. And therefore, your sustenance is now limited, aka, you now don't have any much, a lot of food with you in your house. And therefore, because you ain't be able to grow, grow crops in the back of your house, now you got to go buy from the baker, from the market, which is a sign of poverty. <clears throat> It is therefore written about the land of Israel. It took the puzzle from the book of Tavarim. As we know, God, your Lord, constantly keep his eyes on it. Hashem is watching Israel from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, right? He doesn't do that for all the other lands, just for Israel. It's a very well-known thing. Hashem's divine Providence and Hashkacha is all on Eretz Yisrael from the beginning of the year until the end of the year. So Hashem is constantly looking at it. Why? That's because he who speaks falsely will not remain in my sight. He takes a puzzle from Tehillim from David Amalekh. If you're going to speak falsely, falsehood, guess what happens? Hashem goes, he will not remain in my sight. I won't be looking at him. Ah, Ah, uh, Eretz Yisrael, but the land of Israel, Shehimidat Emet, as we learn, is the attribute of truth. But that's why Hashem constantly keep his eyes on it, because Eretz Yisrael represents Emet. Hashem loves Emet, and Hashem is watching Emet, always. We also spoke about this a little bit, but just to touch upon it, what does that mean? How are you living in Eretz Yisrael? Right, which is a land of truth and living a life of falsehood, right? How does that work, right? Are you, how are you lying in business living in Eretz Israel? How are you lying to people? How are you living a false life in a land of truth? And the truth is that they're not really living in Eretz Israel. They are physically living in Eretz Israel, but they're not reaping the spiritual benefits of what the land of Eretz Israel provides for you, which is truth. And once you tap into that truth, it really equals what? Hashem watching you, which equals what? Kedusha, holiness. All those aspects, Torah, everything, right? So again, just because you're physically living in Eretz Yisrael doesn't mean you're really living in Eretz Yisrael, just to be clear. <clears throat> Section 11. And then when the tzaddik eats to satiate his soul, right? Remember, 
a tzaddik doesn't eat, sorry, a tzaddik doesn't, you know, <laughs> he doesn't go out of his way, he goes, I need to eat this juicy steak, right? The, the tzaddik is eating, why? Because he wants to eat the food so he can get energy from it, so he can serve Hashem and say a blessing, right? That's the point of food, right? And that's what we have to try to aspire to, that's the idea. So based on that, he says, when the tzaddik eats to satiate his soul, and not out of physical desire, he now is in the state of show of favor. And he's nourished from the attribute of truth, right? Again, he's eating for the right reasons. Now, that because of that, as we've learned, Hashem will now be looking at you. His countenance is upon you, right? But now you're nourished from this attribute of truth, which we just spoke about somebody who overeats is in a state of falsehood. So if you're eating correctly, you're in a state of truth. And then when that happens, and now you're eating properly, now when you do that with that strength from this eating, what does he do? He stands up to acclaim and to praise Hashem. Now he's able to really praise Hashem. And then words of truth come out from his mouth. Right? That was the concept of the acclaim and praise of God. These are the concept of words of truth. And these are the aspects of Yaakov Abinu, Mida Tiferet, which we said is also the attribute of Tiferet, right? The middle Sephira between Gevura and Chesed. <clears throat> which is encompassing of the colors. And we spoke about the right, which is this concept of the multicolors that represent all the different tribes, all the different uh, Sfirot and Yaakov Avinu, because it's the central Sefira, the Tiferet, right, which is composed of all the colors. That's why it's called the encompassing of colors. It's a, a term from the Zohar. And therefore, it's based on that, then it's an aspect of also Shemaim, heaven, which is what is Shemaim made up of, as we learned, Eish and Mayim, Eish and Mayim, which means fire and water, right? Why is, it, why is Shemaim, fire and water, why are we comparing this to the encompassing of the colors, a.k.a. Yaakov Avinu? Because fire is represented by the sphera of Kavura, which is difficulties, challenges, tough. And water represents chesed, represents Torah, right? So if you have fire and water, it's a mix of both. What does that equal? Tiferet. It's the middle ground between Gevura and Chesed. That's Tiferet. That's Yaakov Avinu. That's the encompassing of the colors, which we also spoke about the idea how Shamayim, right? At times, certain times of the day, Shamayim has a lot of different colors, right? So we spoke about that as well. And the words, these words that are coming out of the Tzaddik's mouth are also an aspect of the land of Eretz Yisrael. Shehash Pata Gam Ken Midat Yaakov, whose bounty is also from the attribute of Yaakov, as we also explained, right? So remember that the Holy Land receives its Shefa, its bounty from Emet. And we spoke about, we took a Pasuk that Yaakov resided in the land of Eretz Yisrael, right? Truth, Yaakov recited on the land of Israel. Eretz Yisrael receives its bounty from Yaakov Abinu, from Emet. The Alken. <clears throat> Therefore, with the strength that a person becomes a partner to the Holy One in creating heaven and earth, which is an aspect of truth, holy words that flow out and they emerge from him is also an aspect of truth. Now, again, a cu couple of important things. Look at, look at the, 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 the analogy here, right? So it says here, you become a partner with the Holy One, right? You have now, when you're not overeating, which leads, which is a concept of truth, which is a concept of Hashem showing your countenance to you, right? Words of acclaim and praise start coming out. We spoke about that. When that happens, also potentially besides prayer, which means you can ask Hashem for whatever you need. You are... are Hashem basically says, you are my partner with me. We spoke about the idea how a person can create new Torah chidushim, new Torah insights. By you doing that, Hashem goes, I love that. You are a partner with me, 
by you doing that, which means you can make miracles happen. <clears throat> now, check this out, just how cool this is, because he says, check this right here. Look at this right here. So it says, Breshit bara Elohim at the Shemaim Baritz, right? When Hashem created the world. You guys see that? Now, if you look, Breshit, look at the Taf. Bara, that's an Aleph. Elohim, that's a Mem. Aleph, Mem, Taf. Guess what that spells? Emet, the concept of creating heaven and earth, heaven, Shemaim, right? That you are Hashem's partner. But you see how Emet is literally in the first three words of the whole Torah. It's all there for you. That's that concept that Rabbi Nachman is speaking about. So Rabbi Nachman, based on that, continues. <clears throat> and he says, V'zehu she'amru lemala ki Eretz Yisrael hi ayala shlucha. And that's the meaning what we spoke about before, that the land of Israel, what is it called? Ayala shlucha. Is a hind let loose. Which is what? Kainu hanoten imre shafer. It's the Hanoten Imre Shafer. We spoke about Ayala Shlucha. What was the high that loose? We spoke about the, the tribe of Naphtali. That's the blessing that he got, Hanoten Imre Shafer, which is, comes from the concept of the Ginora Valley, which produces fruits that have critical acclaim and they grow so fast, right? A hind let loose was the concept of that which represented the land of Israel. Hanoten Imre Shafer which means has a lot of praise. For when someone is nourished from the aspect of the land of Israel, which is his hind let loose, which represents the aspect of truth, as I had not any reshafer. Then what happens when you connect to the concept of the land of Israel, which is truth, what's going to happen when you connect to truth? Ah, words of acclaim, words of praise will be able to come out of your mouth. <clears throat> which is the same concept. These words of acclaim that are coming out of your mouth is this concept of what? Tiferet. Shechem imre emet. These are the words of truth. Tiferet equals truth. The alken yuchali And so he's going to be capable of creating heaven and earth. Shechem gam ken mimidat emet. Which are also from the attribute of truth as explained above. Rabbi Nachman is just weaving and, and going through everything we learned about and repeating it and 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 summing everything up. <clears throat> the Alav Ne'emar, of him it said, this is a passage from the book of Isaiah, Belemor letzion amiata, saying to Zion, you are my people. So what does that mean? Al tikre ami ela imi. We learned this also. Don't read, you are my people, ami, but read it as, you are imi. You are with me. Look at the word Ami right here. You can sit here, I'm pointing at it. Ami, not Ami, not my nation, but you're literally with me. Ma'ana Abdi, Shemaya the Arabi Miluli. Miluli, just as I make heaven and earth with my word. Afatem, Bimilula, Kanal, Kibet Varin Hamitim, Yuchali, Roshemayim, Ba'aretz. Basically says, just as I make heaven and earth with my word, you too with the word. For with words of truth, he's capable of creating heaven and earth. Just when you, the tzaddik is able to now speak and say words of praises and create a new Torah Kiddushim. And therefore Hashem says, you are now my partner with me. And therefore now you can create heaven and earth. You have that capability to do miracles. Check this out here. Look at this, what he was just talking about right now, though. This is what he's alluding to in this paragraph. If you see here, it says, Velemor letzion ami ata. Exactly. Velemor letzion. Where is Zion, everybody? Zion is Eretz Israel. So, therefore, when you're speaking letzion, aka words of truth, because Israel represents truth, letemor means to speak. When you speak words of truth, what happens? Ami ata. You are my nation, not just Ami, you're Imi, you're with me. You can create heaven and earth. Amazing, right? Taking you a beautiful puzzle and how it ties it home so nicely.
And because he's capable of creating a new heaven and earth, you can perform miracles in heaven and on earth. That's because God, he guides his world according to the dictates of nature. And we spoke about this, how nature is determined by the conduct of the constellations. We spoke about the fact that the constellations is real. Astronomy is real, right? Every month has a different type of energies, and it's all based upon how the constellations move and how it affects you. If you're a Leo or a Scorpio or a Libra, all these different things, all that is real. But therefore, because of the fact that God runs the world, so to speak, under nature, and we can go above that, he's saying specifically, that's what it means when it says that the tzaddik can create new heavens. If he can create new heavens, what does that mean? He can change all the constellations because guess where they hang out? They hang out in the heavens. And therefore, the Oseteva Hadash, and he not only can do that, but he makes nature anew. Isn't that unbelievable? Shamaim Ba'aretz, you are with me. We can change nature. Shamaim is where the constellations are. And therefore, based upon that, you can change your nature or whatever miracle needs to be done. And therefore, he can certainly perform miracles, Shechem Shinuyateba, which is a change of nature. And the matter is a wonder. And consider this well. Beautiful. Now we're up to the last section, guys. And now, if you guys were with me from class number one, which started five hours ago, if you just joined, and you tuned into that, the beginning, beginning of this whole chapter, we had the Pusset that you see here right now. As remember, Rabbi Nachman begins all chapters with a Pusset. The Achalta Machol the Saboa. See that? Okay, so it was a whole pasuk that he started off with. What he's going to do now, he's going to break it down and explain to you how this pasuk, how he started all off, he's going to show you how this whole pasuk is literally the summary of this whole chapter we just learned. Get ready. Enjoy this. <clears throat> so the pasuk was, you will eat and be satiated. Let's see it right here. You will eat and be satiated and praise the name of God, your Lord, who performed for you such wondrous deeds. Never again will my people be ashamed. That's the Pasuk in English. So Rabbi Nachman now breaks it down. Then you will eat and be satiated. What does that mean? That's to say, whatever you eat, whether it's a lot or whether it's a little bit, you will be satiated. And what's going to happen? You will not be steeped in the desire for eating. And you will be in a state of showing a favor. Hashem is going to show you favor. You're going to be nourished by the attribute of truth. And with the strength from this eating, okay, let's quickly review what we just said. A couple of things. Number one. We spoke about the idea how a person can eat an olive's worth of bread, right? A kazayit, you can eat a kabeza, which is an uh, egg size worth of bread, right? And we learned how a tzaddik can eat that and he's totally full, he's satiated. He doesn't need to eat more, right? Because remember, he's eating just to serve Hashem. He's eating just to praise Hashem, right? Now, <clears throat> what, what's, interesting about this statement which is a little different than we learned from before and this is really what he's also trying to say to you is that it doesn't matter if you eat a little bit or a lot of it what's important is what's your intention when you're eating are you eating to serve Hashem are you eating to bless Hashem or are you eating for your own physical desires and needs right obviously less is more because as we spoke about the benefits of it but Rabbi Nachman is also trying to also, I would think he's trying to speak to the regular layman and just say, hey, look, I'm not asking you to eat nothing. I'm asking you to eat with intention and kavanah. 
and, and understand that we're eating to bless Hashem. And that's the most important part of this whole thing. That's number one. And therefore, when you, whatever it is, whether you, that's what he's saying, whether you eat a little bit or whether you eat a lot of it, right? If, if you're going to be in that state, what's going to happen? Because basically you're doing the praise of Hashem. Hashem is going to show you favor. He's going to have his countenance on you. You're going to be nourished by the attribute of truth. And what happens? Wow. Now that we're in that, in that mode, we're connecting to Hashem on that level. Part two of the Pasuk. And praise the name of God, your Lord. Right? We spoke about this. Once you're in that net mode, what happens? We spoke about this, that now you can praise Hashem. You can give him praises, acclaim his name. You can now say Torah Chidushim, right? That's what happens when you're in the mat mode. So that's part two of the Pasuk. The Pasuk continues. Asher, <clears throat> sorry. You're going to be partners with God. And creating heaven and earth, right? Which we spoke about. Now you're going to be a partner with Hashem, right? Now you, and what happens when now you're a partner with Hashem? So it says here, Asher Asa Imachem. That is, Dehainu Al Tikre Ami Ela Imi. That is, do not read this Ami. Look at the wording here. That's why he's trying to bring it down to you. Vezeh Asher Asa Imachem. Okay, that's actual in the post. Imahem is saying that comes from the whole thing that we were speaking about, Ami and Imi. Don't read my nation, read Imi with me, meaning because of the fact that you're with me, you're now, what are you able to do? You're able to create heaven and earth. Then what happens? Azai Lehafli. What happens with this concept of Lehafli? So Lehafli is the concept of Pele. Pele means what? Shetuchlu lasot niflau to mufti b'shamayim ba'aretz. Excuse me. You will be able to perform wonders and miracles in heaven and earth. Lehafli comes from the world miracles. Okay? Wondrous deeds. So you see that in the Pasuk itself, Lehafli is talking about the wondrous deeds, the miracles that you can perform. And what happens after that? Veloboshu. Which means what? Never again will my people be ashamed. That's the last part of the Pasuk. This is the aspect. It's because of the aspect of shame. And we learned about shame is also an encompassing of the colors. Right? Never again will my people be ashamed. We spoke about shaming means what? Encompassing of the colors. Which means what? That if you're embarrassed and you're now asking people for money or for food, it's embarrassing, and therefore what happens? You turn all colors of the sun, red, white, etc. That's what happens. That's that concept of never again will you be ashamed. Why are we saying that? <clears throat> so Rabbi Nachman says, Ki bechina tabusha hu gam banim, ki azel sumaka ve'ate chivra, ufana vishtana lechama gvanim. So he says here that the redness of the cheek disappears, and is replaced with whiteness, taking you from a pasuk from the Gemara, from Baba Metzia. And his face turns now in different colors, and that's the attribute of Tiferet from the fallen attributes. Interesting. So, excuse me. So when it comes to the concept of Tiferet, if Tiferet is a myth and it's truth, one of the, always we have to know that when there's a side of Kedusha, there's also the other side, literally called the other side. And that fallen Tiferet, so to speak, there's one on that side too, on the bad side, on the other side. That's what he's talking about here, that when you're basically not connecting to truth and you're dealing with falsehood, that could lead to poverty, which could lead to what? But also overeating. And overeating leads to, hey, can I have some of your extra food over there that, you, that you're eating there? That's embarrassing. That's the concept of changing your colors of your face. <clears throat> Uma. Matku Dibre Rabotenu And according to this, I love how Rabbi Nachman says this so nice. How sweet, Lefize, how sweet are the words of our sages? Once one has to come onto human beings, his face changes like a kroom. We learned that in the first class. 
What's a croom? A croom is this kind of uh, multicolored mockingbird. I think I showed you guys a video of this before that changes colors constantly. It's the coolest thing. So that's what he was saying. When you have to, when you have to ask people for human beings for these kind of things, your face changes colors. And it turns into different colors. Because once somebody has to come onto human beings, because he blemished the attribute of truth, the hube hastar upon him. And when you when you blemish the attribute of truth, what happens? You're now in a state of a hidden countenance, meaning Hashem is not looking at you right now anymore. The countenance being the attribute of truth and encompassing of the colors, right? Why? Because you're embarrassed. <clears throat> and therefore his face turns different colors, like a kroom, like this bird, which is that attribute of tiferet from the fallen attributes. For God made one to contrast the other, meaning again, talking about one aspect of tiferet, Hashem is looking at you, it comes from the or hapanim, from the light of the face, a shining countenance, right? That's the tiferet of kedusha, the tiferet of holiness, representing a met. But just like that, there's a mirror image on the other side, on the realm of this other side, and that's also this tiferet truth, but it's from the fallen tiferet, aka not Hashem looking at you, falsehood, etc. And that's why it leads to embarrassment and shame. <clears throat> and this, I mean, nothing's like, you know, I, I've read a lot of chapters. Sometimes I've never seen this language it's so well. Like, he really is passionate about what he's saying right now. He's basically saying, he says, now this verse can be expounded as if one were sculpting clay. Rabbi Nachman is basically telling you, like, look how perfectly this whole Torah just, like, adds up beautifully. Look what he says. And he's breaking down, the, again, the Pasuk for you. You will eat and be satiated. That's the aspect of truth, right? Because I don't care if I'm eating a lot or a little, I'm doing it for the sake of Hashem, blessings, etc., which is truth. And so you're going to be able now to perform wonders. Who perform for you such wondrous deeds. That's the second part of the Pasuk. Then never again will my people be ashamed. Well, obviously you're not going to be ashamed. Why? Being that you're an aspect of truth, you're an encompassing of the colors, you have no need to be embarrassed anymore. That's why it says, never again will my people be ashamed. You don't need to be embarrassed. You are on the side of truth. Emet, Hashem is looking at you. You don't have to be embarrassed. Which is an accompaniment of the colors. In the fallen attributes. Therefore, never again will my people be ashamed. Beautiful. And this is the meaning. We spoke about this, I think it was in class two or three, which is the Pasuk in the Shema Israel, right? Which is the meaning in English, I will provide forage in your field for your animals and you will eat and be satiated. And this is what we learned in the Zohar. The Zohar, Esebhu, I in bed Shin. Now we learned about this, how if you look at the word Aseb, <clears throat> Aseb right here. See it right there? So you have the Shin and you have Ayin Bet. These two guys on the outside. The Shin, what was it? Tla Rishon Shlosha Avot. The Shin is the three heads, Shehu Hagvanim, the three patriarchs, Abraham, Itzhak, and Yaakov. That's what the Shin represents. And if that's Abraham, Itzhak, and Yaakov, the middle one is Yaakov. So that's the shin, which is the middle of the three. That's what the shin represents. And the actual of the Aleph Bet was a different concept, which we learned about as well. Excuse me. And that also dealt with the multicolors, et cetera. Again, see past classes so you understand that. Again, Rabbi Nachman is just summing this all up right now. 
Now, the last part here, he says, Mikhainu Besadecha Liv Chemetecha. So now this concept of in your field for your animals, Sadeh, you have to break apart. What do you have to break apart? That's what the word Shetesadeh Sadeh comes from. You have to break apart what? Liv Chemetecha comes from the word behema, which means what? Your animalistic quality. And therefore, if you're able to now break away this animalistic quality of yours, and now you're not so much into the food anymore, what happens? You will eat and be satiated. You're going to eat and be satiated. Being satisfied just with a little bit. I broke my animalistic desires, and therefore now I can eat and be satiated and bless Hashem. Then I will provide Asaph. That's what it's going to mean afterwards. At the end, I will provide for you truth. The truth, right? This is Hashem's countenance, Hashem's light, etc. Now, first of all, Mazel Tov, everybody, for finishing chapter 47. Give your hands, yourself a little round of applause. Congratulations. I want to finish off with something beautiful here. Check this out. Rabbi Nachman took this, actually, this is, if you guys can see this, uh, sorry. This is from the book Tzaddik, okay, which is about the life of Rabbi Nachman. I'm going to read this to you guys. You can read it a lot with you, you know, with me at the same time. But it shows you the connection to this chapter. Rabbi Nachman said that when he was young, he was in the habit of eating very large amounts. He suffered because of it, and he gave up eating such quantities. But when he saw that he still had desire, even for that little he was still eating, meaning he's eating for physical reasons, he changed his mind and started eating again. After all, what difference was there if he ate a little bit or a lot, as long as he was still subject to his desire? Why should he destroy his body for nothing? He used to channel all his desires into the desire for eating. Once he was sitting at the table in his father-in-law's house during the third meal on Shabbat, he was sitting in a corner. It was dark in the house. The Rebbe occupied himself with his devotions in his usual way as usual, and he started requesting that God should show him the patriarchs, Avraham, Itzhak, and Yaakov. Rebbe Nachman is asking Hashem, please show me Avraham, Itzhak, and Yaakov. He promised God, when you show me this, I will cast aside this desire also. Meaning, Hashem, you show me Avraham, Itzhak, and Yaakov, I'm going to get rid of this desire for eating. Namely, the desire for eating. The Rebbe was very forceful in this matter, applying himself to his devotions in his own unique way. Part two. Continues the story. He felt, so what happens? He asks Hashem, show me Abraham and Yaakov, so I can, and, if, and if you do, I'm going to break my desire for eating. He falls asleep. And his great-grandfather, the Baal Shem Tov, came to him in a dream. And he quotes the verse, I provide grass in your field for your animals. Do you know what Pasuk that is? The Pasuk we just said two seconds ago. Benatati eised besadecha, liv chemetecha, veachalta besabata. This is the Pasuk that the Baal Shem Tov sends Rabbi Nachman. When Rabbi Nachman wakes up, he woke up, he was unable to understand the connection between the verse and his request. It occurred to him that it's mentioned in the Tikkune Zohar. This is what we're learning right now, guys. That the word for grass is Asev, and it's made up of the letters Ayin, Bet, Shin. Okay? Ayin, Bet is Bat Ayin, the pupil of the eye. Shin is the three forefathers. Ah, wait a second. So the Pasuk that, 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 that Baal Shem Tov is sending him is two things. Number one, Ayin bet, ayin bet is bat ayin, meaning it's the same words. He's just playing with the same words in Hebrew. Ayin bet, aleph bet, sorry, ayin, the letter ayin bet is literally bat ayin. It's flipped, but it's the same words. What does that mean? The pupil of the eye, which by the way, pupil of the eye means what? Hashem is looking at you. Why? Because now you're sticking to truth because you're getting rid of your desire for eating. Part two, Shin is the three forefathers, which we just told you before. 
Therefore, if you want to see the patriarchs, you want to see Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov, which are represented by the Shin, which I just told you before, if you want to see them, it's possible only besadecha livchem etecha. Only if you're grassing your field for your animals. Besadecha, which means, what do we, what do we just say besadecha was? To break apart livchem etecha, behema, your animalistic quality. You want to see Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov? You got to break your animalistic quality. As it says here, destroy your animality, namely your desire for eating. Accordingly, the Rebbe cast off the desire as well, meaning that's what led him to do that. But that story, as you can see, and by the way, this is kind of cool. Look at the bottom editor's note. I've heard that Rab Nisan Kavlin, one of the leading followers of the saintly Rab Baruch of blessed memory, he told the Magid of Terhovitza of blessed memory, that once he came to Rab Baruch and he saw that he was extremely depressed, he asked him why it was, and Rab Baruch replied that it had been a long time since he had seen the Baal Shem Tov. And each time he went to the Baal Shem Tov's gravesite, he still didn't find him. And just now he continued, I saw, I saw him and I asked him, what is this? He replied that now he had gone to be with Rabbi Nachman, meaning like, as so to speak, like, hey, Rav Baruch, I got to go. I got to go talk to Rabbi Nachman in a dream, <laughs> which is amazing, right? It's, it's out of our, out of this world, all this stuff. But you could see here that, that it's unbelievable because it all ties perfectly what this whole chapter is all about. Rabbi Nachman wanted to see Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, which means really also he wants to be a high level of holiness and Kedusha, and stick with the emet, which is what they represent, right? As we learned, Yaakov is the, the middle one, right? And at the same time, you see how the Habal Shem Tov gives them the clues through this Pasuk. You want to see Abraham, Itzak, and Yaakov? Through this Pasuk, we learned that Asab is Ayin, the pupil of the Ay Hashem looks at you, and the, the concept of the concept of the shin, but those are the three forefathers. And if you have, in order for you to see them, you have to break your animalistic desires. And there you go. So that is unbelievable. And Bezrat Hashem, we finished off another chapter 47. I think that if you want me to, I'm just going to say one more thing quickly because it's nice to do this. This is called, you can see it right here, it's called the 50th gate. Right. If I recommend if people are learning right now, Rabbi Nachman's Likutei Moharan, and you want to pray, this is like tomorrow. I'm going to go straight to work on this because these prayers are so beautiful. And really, what it does, it's the highest level he bought to do it is being able to speak to Hashem by speaking to Hashem and praying to Hashem on the Torah you just learned. Right. So if I open up here to chapter 47, I'm just going to say one little quick prayer. One little quick prayer, let it play fast. And let's see how it connects. And this is <laughs> and this is so relatable to myself since I just got back from Eretz Yisrael. Let's, let's read it, here we go. Bear with me, here we go, guys. Give me the merit to come to the land of Israel, the land of life, the land of holiness, swiftly and easily. May I roll in its dust, kiss its earth, draw down its holy atmosphere, and take refuge in its shadow. Bring me quickly and in peace to the land of Israel the land that you chose from all lands, the land sanctified with 10 levels of holiness, the land of life, the land where you will not eat bread in poverty, where you will lack, lack no good, the land that Hashem your God seeks constantly. The eyes of Hashem your God are on it constantly from the beginning of the year until the end of the year. Oy, that's, uh, that's That goes to my heart right there. There's a lot more prayers inside at that that. Is very beautiful and actually very apropos. I did not see this before. Just want to be clear. And of course, once again, as you guys all know, my passion to getting to Eretz Yisrael is, is, is at a very high level. And there you go. It's connected seriously to this whole chapter. And oh, thank you, Hashem. Thank you all you guys for participating in tonight's class. I uh, appreciate all the, all the support. And Bizrat Hashem, we should continue to grow in the path of Torah, the path of, of the tzaddikim, and continue to learn his holy, holy Torah, Rabbi Nachman of Breslov. Now the question is going to be, what's the next chapter? And that, my friends, is uh, something I have to think about. Uh, the next week following right now coming up, we are going to have one more class, which will be on Tuesday night. Um, and then after that, it's Pesach. We may continue on Pesach. I think it might happen. I just don't know which day of Cholomot it might land on, uh, which will be live from Orlando. 
And uh, Bezrat Hashem, once I get back, we're going to now be doing classes in people's homes in South Florida. So that should be a lot of fun as well. So with that being said, I appreciate all you guys being out tonight. Hashem should bless you all. I hope you guys are all getting ready for Pesach. I know I'm trying. Hashem should help us all. All right. For all you guys on Facebook, have a wonderful night. And for those that want to stick around and chit-chat, I'll be here a little bit more in the Zoom room.